What's going on YouTube? John Conrad here from Drone One Media and I'm really excited about today's video. This box came in the mail today and I've been really excited about this product since it was announced. These are the DJI goggles. First off, we're going to unbox it, I'll show you everything that's in the box, and then after that we're going to take it out and test it with my Phantom 4 Pro and see how it does. Alright, so let's see what's inside this box, as you can see, or I don't know if you can see this, but it says from DJI Technology. So I'm going to go ahead and take my oversized knife and unbox this thing. So right on top, I have a DJI official online store guidance. Uh, it talks about tech support, repairs, and replacements. It's my packing slip there. Put that off to the side. And da 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 da. There it is. The box. Looks a lot like the packaging you've come to expect from DJI. Looks a lot like the Apple packaging, very simple, very clean looking. So let's get this thing open. So you have to actually unhook the handle there. So these tabs, you have to pull those out. And then this lid, oh, looks like I've got some tape there. If you can't tell, I don't do that many unboxing videos, so I apologize. Not exactly the most well produced, but I think I've got it now. Toss that over there. All right, so you open it up, and that's what you see. Goggles right on top, along with some nice foam to protect them. Seem to be very well packaged. So that's the first piece, and here is second piece so really easy to take apart just a single button here and then you just insert this end where the band is into the goggles hear that nice click means they are good to go try these on and I've got a big head so my fitted cap size is about seven and three quarters so I have a good size noggin so let's see if these fit me oh yeah Room to spare. Very nice. And they're not that noticeable on your face. Right? They're not super heavy. They look a lot heavier than they actually are. And uh, yeah, that's what they look like on. So I'm sure I won't get any people coming up to me in public asking me about these. One nice feature is you can flip them up. So if you need to see your surroundings when you're taking off or landing, or if you need to talk to your spotter, it's always a good idea to have someone next to you watching your drone while you're under the hood, so to speak. Uh, that way they can look for obstacles where you might not see them uh, through the camera view of the drone itself. So that's nice to have. Man, I can't wait to get these things powered on and show you. But let's put these aside and I'll show you what else is in the box. So we've got another little black box below it. Looks like we have some cables here. So it looks like a HDMI cable, looks like we have a cleaning cloth, a USB-A to micro USB cord, the plug, so DJI gave you a wall plug to charge it, which is nice, and then uh, looks like some documentation at the bottom. Oh, so this is a wire clip, so they use it for cable management, I guess you can probably uh, Hook it on the side. Oh yeah. So you can actually clip this on the side and then you can run your cables through there so they're not um, 
you know, dangling and, and less likely to get caught on something like your hand or your fingers. Nice touch. So on the goggles themselves, um, there aren't too many buttons, uh, but I'll run you through. On this side, there's the power on off button. So it works the exact same way as the intelligent flight batteries work for the Phantom 3 and Phantom 4. You just press it once and then press and hold and you can hear the familiar sound means that the goggles have been turned on. So I'll turn these off for just a second here while I run through everything else. So right above the power button is the touchpad and you actually use this as a primary controller for the goggles themselves and you can adjust the menus and settings. On the bottom here you have a function button and a return button for navigating through all the menus and then you also have this little dial which adjusts you can actually see it here when you turn it the eyepieces are moving left and right uh, so you can actually adjust it based on where your eyes are to make it most comfortable and have a better uh, viewing experience and then on the back here you see this dial this adjusts the size of the headband so you can make it smaller or larger and then on the bottom here is the micro USB port for charging. The battery is actually built into the band. Very handy, no external batteries or anything like that. Everything is all built in. And you have a light uh, right nearby to show you the charging status. And you may be wondering how long these take to charge. The manual states four hours to charge them uh, if the battery is dead. So not the fastest charging time, but the runtime of these goggles are up to six hours. So four hour charge time and they will run up to six hours. And lastly, this little button here, which I showed you earlier, releases the band, uh, makes the goggles uh, more portable for transportation to have them separated. And it's really easy to connect them. And one really nice thing about the DJI goggles is that each screen is a 1080p screen. The goggles are able to transmit 1080p at 30 frames per second in close proximity when your drone is nearby and then they switch to either 720p at 30 seconds or 720p at 60 seconds as you get further away um, which is really nice because a lot of the goggles that i've seen are lower resolution so you get really high quality video feed when you're um, close by with the drone, full 1080p. Can't wait to get these things fired up and show you what it's like to use the DJI goggles. I'm gonna go charge them and then we're gonna head out to the field. Stay tuned. So I'm out here at the local park and now I'm going to test out the DJI goggles with my Phantom 4 Pro. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know, uh, make sure if you do not own the Mavic, if you're running it with either the Phantom 4, the Phantom 4 Pro, or the Inspire 2, you need to make sure and download the latest version of the DJI Assistant, because that's actually how you're able to activate the goggles to be able to work with your drone. If you own a Mavic, it's really easy. You can do it with your mobile device and activate your goggles that way. But either the Phantom 4, the Phantom 4 Pro, or the Inspire, if you're running one of those drones, make sure you have the latest DJI Assistant 2 version installed. That was a mouthful. Let's go fly. And to connect the DJI goggles to your controller, it's very simple. You just take the micro USB to USB A cable that's included in the box with the goggles. Plug the micro USB end into the goggles and plug the USB A into your controller just as you would your smartphone or tablet that you normally use on your controller. The goggles are taking place of that. There is actually a way that you can plug these in using the HDMI port to the HDMI port on the controller and you can use it that way. Say if you're on set, you're filming or you're with a friend and you wanna be able to use your tablet or smartphone with your controller while your friend or the director of photography or whoever it may be 
they are able to watch the live feed through the goggles. So you just need a mini HDMI to micro HDMI cable and you can make that work as well. For today, I'm just going to be using the goggles in place of my tablet uh, that I normally use and Ali is here to be my spotter to make sure I don't run into any weeds or trees in the park. So I'm gonna take off my hat, put on the goggles. Another thing I wanna mention is you can actually wear the DJI goggles with glasses. So it's got large enough cutouts that even people with glasses are able to use the goggles while wearing their glasses. So that's a nice feature that not a lot of headsets have. All right. So you just power it up here, power up my controller, and power up the drone. Okay, so I have a live feed. Now it's saying my live view is 1080p at 30 frames per second currently because I am in close proximity. As I go farther away, that's expected to change to 720p at 30 frames per second. So I'm gonna start this flight in the HD mode and go ahead and take off. tells you your bank information and all your your data that you would normally see on the tablet is being displayed on the goggles it gives you all the necessary data that you need while in flight or you can enter the full screen mode and it takes all of that away and you're just able to experience what it's like to be in the cockpit of an airplane or, or basically it's like being in the cockpit of your drone so it's really really neat the best way i can describe it is like sitting in front of a giant movie projector and right now it's in 1080p and it's really immersive as dji said when they announced these it just feels like you're in the air flying with your drone so it's really cool um, let's continue the flight now i'm testing out the head tracking gimbal and I'm controlling the drone with the sticks and controlling the gimbal completely with my head movements, which is definitely not ideal for filming, but really neat if you're just wanting to show a friend how cool your new DJI goggles are. You can look up, you can look down. That's really neat. All right, so I turned the head tracking off because I was getting a little dizzy. <laughs> but that's a really neat feature. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and try the head tracking flight. So you can look up and down to control the pitch between a minus 120 degrees and 50 degrees. And you can turn your head left or right to yaw the drone left and right. So I'm actually turning the drone and it's slowly turning as I turn my head. Now I have my expo settings dialed down to make for smoother movements. So if, certainly if you brought that up and brought your gimbal pitch speed up, it would follow your head pretty quickly, but mine's a little slow because I have my motion turned down. So we've had it in HD mode, now we're going to try it in smooth mode. So for smooth mode, it's 720p at 60 frames per second, so it gives a very smooth uh, feel to the motion when you're looking through the goggles. It's twice as many frames as the typical 30, so let's try that out now. Oh wow, okay. Smooth mode is very different because it's really, really smooth, which is nice to see with the gimbal movements how smooth that is. You can see the 720p is very smooth.
which is really nice. And I'm currently about 400 feet away and it's rock solid. Let's go a little farther, see if it remains smooth the entire way. A little altitude here, so it has a nice strong signal. Yeah, that's it's still 720p at 60 frames per second. And I'm, oh, I'd say a little over a thousand feet away. This is pretty unbelievable. Um, it's just like you're flying with your drone. It's so cool. And uh, I can't wipe this grin off my face. So that'll, that'll tell you all you need to know. All right, so just got done with my flight uh, here using the goggles, and I have to say they're they're pretty awesome. Um, the one hiccup I did have with them is when I switched to the smooth mode, which is 720p at 60 frames per second, it kept losing connection on my controller. Um, it happened to me three separate times. I thought I lost signal, but I really wasn't that far away. I was only about a thousand feet away, so I thought that was kind of strange. I flipped it back into HD mode, which is 30 frames per second, and I didn't have any connection issues. So I'm not quite sure if it's a software bug or what's going on, but there's something wrong with the smooth view when connecting it to a controller. If anyone else is using these and using them with a Mavic, with the OcuSync system. Let me know if you're having the same issue or with the Phantom 4 if you're having this issue. Comment down below and let me know what's going on, but um, I'm sure it's just a software thing they have to fix, but for right now, the smooth view, which is the 60 frames per second setting, I could not get to work without dropping the connection. And I even double checked my wires, everything was fine. So I'm not quite sure what's going on, but the HD view worked flawlessly and it's, pretty amazing. You definitely feel like you're flying with your drone. The other cool thing is when you're done using them with your drone, you can plug them into any HDMI device. You could plug them into a gaming console, cable or satellite TV box. I mean, you could watch TV, you could watch movies, play video games, all with the goggles. So that's a nice added benefit as well. So I have to say they are a little on the expensive side. You know, $450 is a not a cheap price. But at the same time, the quality seems to be very high. The footage that you see in the goggles seems to be very high. And it's 1080p when it's close by and 720p as the drone gets farther away, which is more than enough. You can get a great view through the goggles. I have to say, I would definitely recommend these to anyone that can afford them. They are a really neat piece of technology and the long battery life of six hours is great too. Uh, if you're watching a movie or if you're flying all day uh, with multiple batteries, you don't have to worry too much about the goggles uh, going out on you. I will be testing the battery on these and be doing a video on that in the future. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the video. Uh, I'm really excited to do some more testing on these. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that big red subscribe button so you never miss any upcoming videos. I'm John Conrad for Drone One Media. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.